Hello, I'm JW. This is the failed electric heater, and this is a bandsaw which we're going to use to cut this thing open. So uh, let's get on with it. Now what I've got here is this white powder, which is most likely magnesium oxide. Oh, that's illegal drugs, but uh, whichever, it's going to be some kind of insulating material. And we can see here the uh, interior has the coil of the heating element contained inside there. So there's a closer look, and you can see the element inside there, and then the magnesium oxide packed around the outside of that white material there. And it's basically, say, just a white powder which is compressed in, uh, so it obviously supports the... Uh, heating element in the centre with the powder around the outside and of course where it's cut and dislodged because it's just crumbled away to the powder once again. Uh, so there's the wire just pulled a bit uh, out of the inside there and if we actually get hold of it we can just stretch that out. So it's just a very thin resistive wire there so obviously that's what uh, gets hot when the thing is powered on. And of course the heat is then conducted through the material to the external casing. Now this stuff here, which says probably magnesium oxide, is a very good electrical insulator, which is why it's used for things like this. It's also used for a type of cabling you can get, which is a similar construction to this, although it's not actually for heating purposes, it's just designed for actual conducting electricity. Uh, the major problem with this stuff is that it uh, attracts water very easily, and therefore it's important that these are completely and 100% sealed. So these can even get into the air, any moisture in the air will basically combine with this and when it gets damp it becomes electrically conductive and then of course the thing is next to useless. And this is kind of what happens with uh, heating elements in things like ovens and whatever. It only takes a tiny little flaw somewhere in the actual insulation, moisture gets in and then the thing obviously degrades away and uh, eventually this will short onto the outer casing and cause a fault. Certainly now with RCDs on pretty much all circuits, you'll find that normally it's the uh, RCD that trips on these because it's just uh, a conductive path has formed between the inner wire here and the outer metal covering, which of course in normal appliances is earthed all the time. And then of course sometimes elements do fail in more catastrophic fashion, so you end up with a sort of a split or break in the actual covering there. But uh, certainly if there's an RCD on there, more often than not, the RCD will trip. And in some cases it will only trip intermittently because the uh, moisture is in there. When the element heats up, of course, the moisture can be driven off. But again, when it cools down again, uh, moisture can obviously get back in there, cause the same problem. Now, the outer tubes of these are fairly substantial. I mean, if we try and actually bend it there with these pliers, then uh, it's not actually uh, bending particularly easily. In fact, it's actually breaking the plastic away more than anything. So, uh, fairly substantial stuff on the outside because it needs to be so that the element stays within the actual confines of the powder there. It doesn't obviously migrate over to the outside. And uh, as you can see here then, uh, it's just the two tubes go up into the top and there'll be some kind of connection at the end here. Again, that's very typical. So that's the end of it. It's just basically the end of the tube. There's a sealing compound been fixed into the end and there's the actual centre wire coming out. Of course that's also been bent over. It's normally straight through like that. And again, that's pretty typical for things like oven elements and whatever else, so uh, again, not uh, entirely surprising what we've actually got there. So that's inside a fairly typical heating element. So it's pretty uh, standard there with the uh, prong on the end there, and then the tube obviously with the magnesium oxide in and the uh, heating filament or element inside there. So just coiled up to obviously give it a much greater length so you can have the uh, appropriate resistance that you want. And generally these things, if they're higher power, then all that's happened is the actual length of it is longer. So you can obviously then uh, get a larger surface area for heating from that. And obviously the length of wire inside also vary depending on the actual power rating required. And the end of these with the pins, again, fairly standard. Though if you buy these for, say, an oven or something similar, then you'll generally find there's something that's been spot welded onto the end here, like a sort of a terminal strip or something similar. And this has to be welded, of course, because you can't solder to that, because if you did, First time it turns on the heat up, the solder melts and the wires fall off. So uh, that's the end of that particular heating element. 
Not terribly uh, well made because say, there's no earth on the outer casing on this one. If we've had an earth there it would be considerably safer but uh, of course that would have cost uh, five pence more or something so also they didn't bother. So that's it for this time and until next time thanks for watching.